I'm gonna give you one of the best secrets that you can use to increase your explosive strength, and we're gonna start right now. Okay, so one of the problems that we see with athletes is some athletes tend to have a dead nervous system. And some of these athletes might look like Gumby. When they catch a clean, they fold all over the place. When they're back squatting or even doing a bench press, they're super, super wobbly. And their body's struggling with coordination. Their body's struggling to actually coordinate everything together. And where this also might come into play is if we have somebody who's a big hulking individual, but they sort of move really robotic and they're not super explosive. They're not able to take that big muscular absolute strength that they have and apply it into some dynamic explosive strength. And so some of the principles that we like to use are based around potentiation. And so what is potentiation? If we can think about having a, a muscle belly, so the muscles here, we need to increase the innervation, so the energy that goes into the actual muscle to fire and recruit the entire muscle as effectively as possible. And how does this happen? This happens by using contrast methods. And so we're gonna give you three different problems and provide those solutions so that we can improve different issues that you might have in the weight room, that your athletes might have, so they can be more explosive. Okay, so that first scenario, let's say we have a, a D lineman or a shot putter or a wrestler. You have someone who's a little bit bigger, they're super, super strong, they can back squat you know, 500 pounds, okay? So they're an athlete who, they've got a really nice squat, they're here, let's pretend this is 500 pounds. Boom, moving that nice and quick. They do a set of four. Boom, okay? So what we can do is if you are this athlete, you know, you do your back squat, you're really, really strong, you know, you're, you can squat a ton. But then when you go do a jump, let's pretend we walk over here, and that same athlete, I'm gonna demonstrate on a box jump first. That same athlete does a box jump and they're like. Like this, okay? This happens a lot, especially with extremely strong athletes. And I think that is why some people view absolute strength through that negative lens. Like, oh, it makes you big, bulky, and slow. So what we can do now is you take this athlete that you see jump like this, they, they struggle, they're super, super rigid. Okay, they almost look like a baby learning how to walk or a baby deer learning how to run, right? So now, to play into their neural drive and their nervous system, what we're gonna do is trick them to be more athletic. And what happens is that their preference is going to be to squat heavy. So we wanna get them to squat heavy and at the same time, we're gonna cue them on how to use that neural drive more effectively for explosive strength. So now we're gonna go back, we're gonna hit a squat, and then we're gonna do a stair jump and walk you through that entire solution. Okay, so now the big dude, the big athlete, right? We're playing to their strengths, no pun intended. So now they come in, they, let's say they hit a, a triple or a set of four, right? So they're here. Okay, now here's the key when we're talking about contrast training. I recommend resting about two to three minutes. Based off of the best research out there, a two to three minute rest is gonna help them recover enough so that when they go and do the rapid coordination movements, now they're actually able to execute them to the level that you need. So we're gonna rest for about two to three minutes. We're gonna walk over to the stair jump and the big key factor here is cueing big athletes or super strong athletes to react quickly. Land, go, land, go, land, go. Just like they do out of the bottom of a squat, just like they do out of the bottom of a bench press, but they have to do it at a faster pace. Now we're gonna head over to, to the stair jumps and you're gonna see how to do that a little bit quicker. Okay, so I haven't warmed up other than doing those squats and my cameraman just said there's no chance that I can do this in three jumps. So one of the things that we've gotta think about when we're really strong is coordinating your whole body to be as explosive as possible. If we're on the football field or if we're wrestling, we need to use our arms to execute rapid movements and that's everything in the brain firing together to be as explosively strong as possible, okay? So now we're warmed up from that back squat. We come over here, two to three minutes rest. Oh, oh, a little slow on that first jump, but I did make it in three. And that's the big thing is like now, okay, so that's my first 
rep. I'm gonna do a second rep and hopefully, based off of warming up and learning the skill, relearning the skill from our previous training session, now I can execute this a little bit quicker. And that's one of the big tricks here is that we're actually tricking their nervous system to learn the movements faster. Ooh, okay, so that was better. Second time through, I executed it better. And now my nervous system's starting to fire more effectively. In order to improve your speed and explosiveness, you need to make sure that your recovery is on point. And that's exactly why I recommend Transcend Creatine here from Earth Fed Muscle, along with some of the best tasting whey protein on the market. It's gonna help you recover. It's gonna help you produce more power output. And that is gonna make you more explosive. Now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so the second problem, you have an athlete or you are that individual and you tend to back squat or front squat and what you'll see is a great example of myself back squatting like 515, collapsing my chest forward, shooting my hips back, still getting the rep, okay? Still executing it, but putting myself in position where I could have a higher chance of being injured. So ideally, as we increase our strength, we wanna really zero in on that technique. And if we can zero in on that technique, we have a lower chance of being injured. So in this case, when you see that B-roll and I'm collapsing my chest forward, my hips shoot back, what ends up happening is I get that rep, but it could put a lot of stress on my lower back. And that is related to trunk coordination, dynamic trunk control. So what we can do now, okay, with this solution is I like to train one, understanding that movement pattern. If we have an individual, how do we want that squat to look? If they're longer limbed, I don't mind if they low bar, okay? I typically really still like to train high bar, but we wanna train so that they can keep that trunk as stable as possible. That's the big key here is it doesn't matter if I'm leaning, I need to be stable. If I'm upright, 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 and I go here, that's when I'm gonna get hurt. I need to be stable. So even if I set and I'm here, you know, I squat full range of motion, it's okay if I'm stable there, okay? So that's the first key. The second key now is I like to use an exercise like this, like zombie squats. I'm gonna change my mic here a little bit, pull this out. So if I do a zombie squat here, so I'm, I'm here, right? I have to execute this perfectly and I'm squeezing through my belly button. Okay. So the zombie squat is gonna force me to stay more upright. The contrast method is execute a zombie squat for two to four reps. Rest two minutes to three minutes. And now we're gonna go over to the glute ham and we're gonna do the glute ham wise, okay? So now we're focusing on an upright trunk, dynamic trunk control. And then we're gonna go over, do an accessory where we have to train our abs and our back to coordinate while we're doing some shoulder work. So it really forces our trunk to be more stable. Remember, the key lesson here is stability. So let's go do these Y's. I'm gonna keep holding my mic like this because I feel cooler. Okay, so we get on the glute ham. And you can even, if you wanted to, hold a little bit of a bent knee position to train your, your hamstrings a little bit more here, okay? So I got slightly bent knees and I wanna squeeze my abs to the floor while I push my lower back up. Okay, so I'm here. Oh! One more. So we want to force that stability. Now we want to rest two to four minutes. We go back, execute those zombie squats, rest two to four minutes, come back, execute, hammer out these Ys on the glute ham, focusing on that dynamic trunk control. And that's going to be the second solution to our potentiation problem. Okay, so that third problem, this is gonna be a little more related to upper body strength and coordinating that explosive strength to help your lockout. So a lot of really, really strong individuals that struggle with rapid coordination, get that, that big bench here, and then they can't drive and lock it out. They struggle to recruit the high threshold motor units inside that shape of Florida right there. Do you ever see the shape of Florida? <laughs> so, what we can see, and I'm gonna demonstrate here, now keep in mind everybody, when I bench, this is my lockout. My right elbow is fully extended. So I always have a bad lockout because my right arm does not extend. I had a, a bad bout of Lyme disease for about two years. 
uh, and it's led to some arthritis in my body, but I'm still gonna show you anyway what you tend to see with athletes who struggle with that lockout. So I'm gonna load up some plates here and I'm gonna help you increase your athlete's rapid coordination, which is gonna lead to a bigger bench and a more explosive you know, lineman, any sport really, that, that, that can help with this. Posting up on somebody. So you might see someone, they're here, and then all of a sudden they're here and they're flailing all over, kicking, and they can't lock out. They're sort of stuck. They can't drive through and accelerate through that finish. So one of the best tricks that I like to use is, again, the contrast training method because it's gonna help you potentiate their nervous system, which then improves the contractile structure of the muscle, okay? So now they're fatigued a little bit. You rest two to three minutes, and then we're gonna go hit that big explosive strength exercise that you can use to increase their bench. Okay, now remember, we had a bad lockout. We struggled to accelerate through. So what movement can we use paired with that bench press to potentiate the nervous system? Again, contrast training, is we're gonna use a banded push-up. And the whole point here, you know, we got our power elastics. This is our strength band. This is available at garagestrength.com if you guys want. It's got loops in it. It's really easy to use. What I like to do if I'm doing this movement is to wrap my hands through the handle and then in here. And now, one, the band's gonna increase my mind-muscle connection to be more explosive. It's also gonna force me to coordinate a little bit better at the top. And I'm even gonna do this trying to do almost like a clap push-up. I'm not gonna clap, but I'm gonna accelerate through that finish. Okay, so we did the bench, three minutes rest. Now we're coming over here and I just wanna get five to seven reps. I don't wanna do 20 reps because then I'm gonna be too fatigued when I get back to the bench press. We're trying to focus on explosive strength. So when we're trying to increase explosive strength, we keep the reps a little bit lower, focus on a little bit more heavy load on the traditional barbell movement, and then focus on explosively moving with the jumps, even, you know, I know we weren't doing explosive movements on the, the glute ham, but that's only five to seven reps. And then here again, five reps here. So I'm here, bands behind my back. Pause. And I even like that pause at the end, almost where that lockout's gonna be. And that's gonna increase the way that your nervous system's coordinating, which then leads to rapid coordination, which is gonna help enhance your explosive strength. Okay, remember, who benefits from this? Think about bigger athletes, or even just extremely strong athletes that struggle to be fast. They struggle to be explosive. Those are the individuals that are gonna benefit from it. What should we be looking for? Look for someone that struggles with the lockout. Look for someone who collapses their chest when they're back squatting. Look for athletes that sort of stutter step when they're jumping. All of those factors are based around rapid coordination. You know, if you have a lineman or a wrestler and their first step's really slow, a swimmer, swimmers sometimes struggle a lot coming off the blocks. They struggle with explosive strength. So now you can increase their strength with a back squat and then do some jumps later on, and that's gonna help improve their overall power output off of the blocks. How frequently should we do this? I recommend doing this once a week for four to six weeks and then breaking from that contrast style of training for about two to four weeks, okay? So you can do it once a week and then maybe another day later in the week, you do strictly plyometric focused training. So use all three of these different solutions to increase your overall power output, increase that explosive strength. And if you need more concepts and more ideas to improve your overall sports performance, click on the link down below, head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick up our sports performance Bible book and course to help you become the best version of yourself. Remember, always cultivate your power. Peace.